we are facing a real war. And you are facing real possible hardships. Are you willing to do that? Hey, what's up, guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun channel. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of a guy named John McAfee. If you've ever used McAfee antivirus, he's the guy that created that and sold off the company, made billions. Uh, you might know that he's a little bit crazy, right? He's uh, predicted that Bitcoin will be a million dollars by the year 2020 or else he will eat his own private parts. I mean, that's what he said. And, you know, he's been causing a lot of trouble with uh, shilling ICOs and things like that. So he's out there. But he had this lecture the other day and he said some pretty interesting things. Now, regardless of what you think of him and his antics, he does kind of have a grasp on what this technology is with blockchain and where it's headed and the potential positive and negatives of a world that's going to be on the blockchain. But listen to what he says about this. Check this out. Please, God, see the power of this, that if history, and it will at some point, will apply the blockchain to the constant growth of human development, which is history, and there will be no more lies. Because consensus says, I'm sorry, that just did not happen. I mean, even today, people looking back at World War II, were people who actually believe that maybe the Jewish people were not annihilated in Germany. I mean, it's a question. If the blockchain were here, there'd be no questions. Well, yeah, go back here to block number 11773345. You can see right now. To that effect, do you realize that when the blockchain is applied to every aspect of our life, that human deception will disappear? Lies cannot exist in a technological system where every act has a consensus. So did you catch that? He said that there won't be any more lies. Everything will be transparent. Now this is extremely prophetic in my opinion because when you look at Revelation 13, it says here from verse 7, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, that's the Antichrist or the first beast, and to overcome them, overcome the saints. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So this entity, this power, takes over everything, okay? But it's also allowed to make war with the saints. There is a transparency about killing Christians in this time. Now, I kind of want you guys to think about that in this idea of there will be no more lies, right? And everything is tracked. But he continues and elaborates on this. Lies cannot exist in a technological system where every act has a consensus, as an observer, an actor, an interplay. So that when you call home and say, you know, honey, I'm working late, you know, your wife doesn't have to say, yeah, I don't, you know, so you, uh, no, you left the office with so-and-so and you checked into this hotel and you're now in bed with her. When you get home, you have to have a long talk with me. In fact, you may not want to come home. You may laugh or smile or just shrug it off, but believe me, God, this is happening. This is the power of what's happening. Now, how we implement this, because I do not want a world where my every act is written in an immutable ledger. I still believe in privacy. But if you do not think of it now and make your choices appropriately, there will be some smart motherfucker who will end up being the world dictator, and he will implement that system. Because the blockchain gives the vision that George Orwell wrote about in 1984. It gives that potential power to anyone willing to take it. So we can't let that person do that. We cannot let that person take that because the blockchain has taken that centralized power and distributed it to you. For God's sake, don't give it back. So I think when John McAfee here is talking about this smart mother bleeper who's going to become a totalitarian dictator who will deploy this blockchain thing, I think without even knowing it, he is describing almost to a T what the Antichrist man of sin will deploy through the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, all implemented through the false prophet. But the key here is an economic system where everybody can buy, sell, 
trade. Doesn't matter if you are rich or poor or a slave, everybody gets to participate. It's this Orwellian dream come true. He sees it. And I think it's fascinating that a man who I don't think is Christian, or at least he's not pushing the gospel now. I know he might have grown up in a conservative home, but he's not someone that is necessarily preaching the gospel out there. He sees the potential dangers and threats of the blockchain revolution in terms of if the people fail to implement the proper types of infrastructure. And so I think there is a battle in the upcoming Web 3.0, fourth industrial revolution, all this stuff, where central, traditional central authorities are going to go against this prying away of uh, people trying to take the power back. And it's going to be a back and forth, back and forth until ultimately a leader will come and uh, maybe destroy, you know, terrorists or certain enemies of certain nation states. And perhaps they will be killed or mortally wounded in the process and some kind of technological thing will resurrect them and they will, you know, have their ICO, so to speak. <laughs> I know it kind of sounds dumb, but in a sense, it's possible, you know, take this mark on the forehead or the right hand and you can buy, sell, trade, do whatever. Now, the other part of this that I want to mention is this idea of the blockchain being something where it tracks everything, it records everything. And really it's a counterfeit to our reality where the all loving God who is omnipresent pretty much has an account of every single action ever. Really, if you think about it, and I think, you know, from, from God's perspective, it's like time itself could be the chain, you know, with each moment being a block and all the things that occurred in each moment being recorded on each block in this, you know, spiritual, supernatural blockchain, so to speak. So in a sense, you know, God already has this immutable ledger of reality that doesn't negate free will because I think there is room for free will. There's an analogy that I think Rob Skibo is the one that told me about this. I haven't talked to Rob in a while, but in any case, it's a good example. He talked about how when you walk into a house, for example, let's say you walk into the front door and there are several different hallways and paths and everything else to get to the back porch. Now, each individual person can walk in and freely go whichever direction they'd like to that back porch but they're all within the confines of the house. And that's similar to what I think physical reality is in a sense where time itself is constant as far as we can tell, but it's sort of the tracks of reality where physical creation and existence can operate on this track of time. But again, we have the freedom to do whatever we want within the confines of that created space, which is creation itself here, which you know scientists have called the laws of physics and things like that. So I'm kind of going off the deep end there, but I think there's something there. I think there is a way to speak about these topics, not just in a prophetic sense, but really in a grounded theological sense, because what I think is ultimately happening with the blockchain and this idea of wanting trust and wanting to eliminate suffering, eliminate lying, all these things. It is a seeking of the godly things of this world, of the image of God that we're created in. However, I think it's going to fall prey to the same types of things that humanity has been having problems with ever since the fall, which is pride and greed and things like that. That's going to come into play and it's going to sweep things up maybe in a eschatological end of the world type of scenario. I don't know. But ultimately, this idea of the book of life and our names being written in it, those of us who have declared our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, keep in mind, though, even though there is a book of life, Jesus also said that there will be many who said, Lord, Lord, but who will not enter the kingdom. And that means there are folks who declare the gospel, but their names are not written in the book of life. This immutable leisure, <laughs> the only one that I really care about being on, the book of life. So, you know, it's really fascinating. These concepts have a theological underpinning, but most people aren't thinking about it that way. And when somebody like John McAfee explains this, the relevance to Bible prophecy and the Antichrist, man of sin, all these things in the context of the 21st century and how we understand the world today, man, that stuff makes a lot of sense. And I just wanted to throw this out there because, again, it's not just crazy fringe conspiracy theorist Christians, you know, saying all this stuff. No, it's people like John McAfee, who's very much of the world saying the same thing, seeing the same thing. And we also have a responsibility to play in that, to make sure we resist this totalitarian thing as much as possible. Ultimately, of course, we know that it's going to take over. Again, the authority of the dragon is going to be given to this beast and the beast system and the leader, and, and they're going to have the ability and the authority on this earth to kill Christians openly. Okay, so that's kind of the ugly truth about 
all this stuff in terms of how things will play out. If you go to Revelation 6, it even talks about how there are souls under the throne of God asking, hey, when is the killing going to stop? So there's a lot there, and, and I could always go on about this stuff. But I really think it's an important topic to discuss because blockchain is going to take over everything, folks. You're going to start hearing about blockchain even more than you already are from people like me. Businesses and you know corporations, everybody's going to go on the blockchain. It's, it's already starting to happen. Um, there's going to probably be other technologies that could you know, uh, surpass the blockchain. I think there's something called the hash graph and things like that. I've been trying to keep up, but it's hard to do. In any case, John McAfee letting people know that we have a choice here. We have a role to play in this, which happens to align with scripture in terms of some of the churches that are described. For example, in Revelation 2, the church of Smyrna, do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days, you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. And so what causes so much slander from those who say they are Jews but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, to the point where they're throwing people, Christians, in prison and killing them. What would cause that? And then there's the Church of Philadelphia, who Jesus here talks about how they didn't deny his name. And same thing, the synagogue of Satan here is mentioned, but they're going to come bow down before your feet. Because you have kept my word about patience, endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches." So here we have a group of Christians who actually live through the hour of trial. And what are they up to during this time? Especially, you know, if the Jews start bowing down at their feet, what are they doing? That is so powerful. And I'm going to leave the conversation there because I think I've stirred enough thought in you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. John McAfee talking about the future of blockchain and how there's obviously a lot of positive things that can happen, but there is a very scary potential negative as well, which happens to align with eschatological passages in the Bible. Leave a comment. Please give me a thumbs up. Share the video. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless. So these are serious issues that we're dealing with. And every government on the earth is looking at ways to shut us down. Why is that? It's because we represent the greatest threat to every world government that has ever emerged. And that threat is governments run on money. Where do they get the money? From you and I, the people. And how do they do that? Through a thing called taxation. So. Governments know that cryptocurrencies, if they succeed and have widespread or universal acceptance, their funding is gone. Who's going to pay the congressman? Air Force One fuel for that massive uh, traveling hotel that the president flies in. It'll be gone. Now, do you think world governments are just going to sit idly by and go, well, let's just see what happens? You know, we have this great meeting, it's going to end us all. Well, don't worry about it. We'll see what happens. No! They have a war room now planning on what do we do to shut it down. We are facing a real war. And you are facing real possible hardships. Are you willing to do that? This is a question.